so starting the first illustration in which the length of second hand of the clock is 10 cm so here actually indirectly the radius is provided by us or we can say the position vector so r is equals to 10 cm we have to find out the first angular velocity so here the first value angular velocity in which if you consider that the second hand makes an angular displacement of 2 pi radian so here the angular displacement means d theta is equals to 2 pi radian in 1 minute so delta t or we can say dt is 1 minute so you have to convert this minute into second so 60 second and hence according to the equation of angular velocity that means omega is equal to d theta by dt is equal to 2 pi divided by 60 so that is pi by 13 radian per second don't forget to write down the unit because this is very important now the second thing which is asked that we have to find out the linear velocity so we know one scalar relation between the linear velocity and angular velocity is given by v is equals to r omega therefore v is equal to the value of r is 10 and the value of omega we have earlier obtained that is pi by 30 radian per second so zero zeros are cancelled out so the answer is pi by 3 centimeter per second see i have written centimeter because the length of the second hand of a clock is given by 10 centimeter now the third task what is given to us is to find out the angular acceleration that is given by alpha and is d omega by dt but if you see over here that the value of angular velocity is constant and hence the value of alpha will be zero and so the relation for alpha is 0 radian per second square you can correct out in your textbook that the unit is written second inverse but it should be second square now the fourth one that is the radial acceleration so we have to find out ar and this is nothing but the centripetal acceleration v square over r so the value of v is pi by 3 whole square into 1 over 10 and that is equal to pi square 
डिवाइडेड बाय थर्टी सॉरी थ्री स्क्वेर इज नाइन सो पाई स्क्वेर बाय नाइनटीन सेंटीमीटर पर सेकंड स्क्वेर इन एवरी quantity you should have to write down this unit otherwise your one mark will be cut and at last we have to find out the tangential acceleration so that is at and we know its equation alpha into r so alpha has zero r is 10 cm so finally at is also zero for linear acceleration a is equals to under root of at square plus a alpha square that is equals to under root of at square is 0 so i am putting a r square this is not alpha actually this is r so under root a r square is equals to a r and a r is having the value of pi square divided by 90 centimeter per second square starting the illustration number 2 a mini train is moving in a children's park at a linear velocity of 20 km per hour so here the velocity of mini train is equals to v0 that is 20 km per hour that stops in 10 seconds so now see here the unit is in second and the other one unit is given in centimeter so we also have to change this kilometer per hour unit into a cgs system and for that i am converting this kilometer per hour into meter per second so 20 into 1000 divided by 3600 second so the final answer will be 5.55 meter per second so this is the actual velocity of the moving train now the radius of the wheels of mini trains that means small r is given to us as 20 cm that is equals to 0.2 meter now the final velocity or we can say the initial angular velocity means omega 1 before the train stops is equals to v1 over r and here v1 means v0 or we can directly write over here v0 that means 5.55 divided by 0.2 so the answer over here is 27 Point seventy five radian per second. So this is the initial angular velocity, and the omega two after the train stops, the final angular velocity that is equal to zero, and hence. now i am consider the time interval from t is equals to 0 second to t is equals to 10 second so therefore delta t is 10 second and hence the value of the acceleration 
means omega 2 minus omega 1 over delta t that is equals to 0 minus 27.55 sorry 75 divided by 10 and that is equals to minus 27.75 divided by 10 therefore final answer will be minus 2.775 radian per second square So this is the value of deacceleration and this negative sign suggests deacceleration and this is the magnitude of that. And now we will switch on to the next illustration number 3. Starting the illustration number 3, here a truck is moving with the speed of 60 km per hour. So as it is the initial speed, I am writing it as V1. So let's convert it into the meter per second. So 16 into 1000 divided by 3600 0, 0. Here 60 is cancelled out by 0. 0.6 and so that is equal to 16.6 meter per second. Here the radius of the wheel is given by 100 centimeter. So that is equals to 1 meter. On applying the brakes, the wheel stops after 10 rotation. So the displacement of wheel that means theta is 10 rotations. or I want to convert this rotation into radian then I have to multiply with 2 pi so 10 into 2 pi radian that is equals to 20 pi radian and we have to find out the distance travelled by truck and the angular acceleration of the wheel. So these two quantities we have to obtain. So first of all according to the scalar relationship between V and omega, the value of omega 1 I can find out. Therefore omega 1 is equals to V1 by R and here the V1 is having the value of 16.66 divided by the radius of the wheel is 1 meter. So omega 1 is 16.66 radian per second. So we can consider this as initial angular velocity and the final angular velocity at which the bus or truck stops so that is 0 and therefore now I can find out the value of alpha from the third kinematic equation or the third relation of rotational motion that is omega 2 square minus omega 1 square divided by 2 theta that is equal to 0 minus the square of 16.626 is equals to 277.55 divided by 2 into the value of theta is 20 pi radian so 2 into 20 pi and that is equals to minus 277.55 divided by 2 into 2 is 40 pi which is equals to minus 2.20 and the unit of angular acceleration is radian 
per second square. So this is the angular acceleration. Now one rotation is equal to two pi r kind of linear distance. And here the 10 rotations are given. So for 10 rotation, the distance will be 10 into 2 pi r. So it is 20 pi r distance. And the linear distance traveled by the truck is given by T is equals to Tan into 2 pi r. So 2 is as it is, pi is having the value 3.14 and r is having the value 1. So that is equal to 62.8 meter. And with this our illustration number 3 is also over. Now we will study one more quantity in the rotational kind of motion that is torque. Let's start the illustration number 4 which is related to the rotational dynamics in which we have replaced the torque. Here the force acting on a particle R. So here the position of the particle is given. vector r that is equals to 2, 3, 6. The force which is acting is also given in terms of vector notation that is 3, 4, 5 Newton. So our first task is to find out the magnitude of torque producing 3 rotational motion. And so, the torque acting on the particle is given by, we have just reduced one relation, tau is equal to r cross m. That is equals to I cap, J cap, K cap. So the first line is always reserved for the direction vector. The value of R is given by 2, 3, 6. And the force is 3, 4, 5. That is equals to I cap the 3 into 5, 50, minus 6 for the 24, minus j cap, 2 5 the 10, minus 6 3 the 18, plus k cap, into 2 4 the 8, minus 3 3 the 9. Now let's simplify this. This is equals to minus 9 i cap, plus 8 j cap, minus 1 k cap. So this is the value of tau or you can write in a simple form or in a component form as minus 9, 8, minus 1 but don't forget to write down its unit which is Newton into meter. But this is its direction you can see. So what is the magnitude of torque? So for magnitude
we have to find out the value of r cross f with the scalar product and unit vector here the unit vector is given to you 1 upon root 2 into 1 1 1 so the value of r cross f is minus 9 8 minus 1 into 1 upon under root 2 the unit vector is 1 1 1 here the statement is changed slightly from your textbook so 1 upon root 2 is as it is now between these two vectors I am applying the scalar product so I will get minus 9 plus 8 minus 1 so the answer will be 1 upon root 2 minus 9 plus 7 that is equals to minus 2 upon root 2 so this root 2 is cancelled in the numerator by quotient root 2 and therefore the magnitude of tau is given by minus under root 2 newton into meter. So with this your example is over and you aware that how to find out the magnitude as well as the direction of torque.